<laughs> I think it's the first time I've ever started where I'm actually sitting still and not doing a whole lot of stuff. Yeah. What's up, everybody? <laughs> Tatiko305, what's going on? Tyler Kemp, greetings, greetings, greetings. Man, WDM1348, you just got here. Why are you requesting to talk to me, fam? You don't know who I am. Don't do it to yourself. Craze Driver, what's going on? Mito 790P, thank you very much for the compliment. Greatly appreciated. Mo, what's up? <laughs> How are you? I think that's Mo. Hopefully. <laughs> Whoever's sending hearts, I appreciate the love. Greetings, greetings. Welcome, everybody. It is Wet Wednesdays with the Pum Pum Chronicle. Uh, WDM 1348, thanks for the compliment. Appreciate it. It's great. Oh, okay, Mo, it is you. <laughs> What's going on? So, we are back for another, another round of the Pum Pum Chronicles. I'm your host, AJ Badass Jones. I am the host of the Pum Pum Chronicles podcast. Uh, this is my personal page. It's also the podcast page. Um, what else? Uh, I'm on Patreon. There are episodes that are streaming on uh, Apple, iTunes, Anchor, Google Podcast, uh, Stitcher, CastBox, iHeartRadio. Did I forget one? Yeah, there's also video logged episodes on YouTube. Don, what's going up, my sweetheart? How are you doing? <laughs> so, it's good to see everybody. Uh, today, we are going to be talking about relationships, um, you know, if there are outdated practices in relationships and all that kind of good jazz. So to get a lot of input and feedback based on a couple of different articles. Um, one is an article that I read and then the other was um, like a meme or like a tweet that somebody had put out. Um, WDM1348, you see my duck? You have a duck? Is it a nice duck? Does it have long feathers? Does it have pretty feathers? Do you stroke your duck? Do you pet your duck? Do you feed it bread and water? Listen to me, man. <laughs> Today's not the day. If, if you're gonna come on here acting crazy, you're just gonna get ejected from the live, you're gonna get blocked, so don't do it to yourself. Sit back, enjoy the conversation, stay for a while, give some input, you know, just kinda let it be that, so. Um, anyhow, I hope that everyone is, I'm trying to paint no mind. People are just weird. I just, you know what it is? Like, I'm, I'm, I'm puzzled by the fact that anybody feels like they want to come on live and show me their penis. Because I don't know if you know, I'm not the only one that can see it. Everybody will see your penis, sir. And, and, and worse, on top of that, then you don't even spell properly. Come on, boss. Don't do it to yourself. Like, <laughs> I'm, I'm all for fun and all that kind of good jazz, but yeah, you'll get properly embarrassed and it's just not a nice thing. Uh, Uncle Yellow 56 what's going on? Mito 790 I'm not sure why you put the sideways eyes, but you know. Um, if you have not subscribed to my YouTube channel, it is the Pum Pum Chronicles, a pod. You can search it on YouTube. Please go ahead and subscribe to that. Leave some feedback, share the information. There is a plethora of listening platforms and, and video, plat uh, video opportunities where you can uh, see the different discussions that I've had over a period of time. But I hope that everyone is well. Um, Stefan Rosbeek, greetings and welcome. So this week we're going to be talking about... Um, the ins and outs of relationships and whether a person loses their power by taking their spouse's last name and if those kind of practices are outdated and archaic so as always we're waiting for a few more people to join and then we will hit the discussion and see what everyone has to say in the meantime and in between time how is everyone faring how are you all dealing with COVID, how is the quarantining situation going for everybody um mel and i as most of you know we were in jamaica um for a little over two weeks. I, of course, I'm back home right now. As you can see, I'm sitting outside in my backyard. Um, it was great. The, the quarantine process, uh, Kirby Empress, what's going on, honey? <laughs> the uh, quarantine process is pretty much, they're very diligent down there. So it's like, there's an app that you have to download on your phone, depending, I guess, on how long you have to be there. Um, but I'm pretty sure that most everyone has to download this app. And we basically had to do a video diary, which wasn't more than like three minutes. And so we had to do a video log check-in every single morning and every evening. Crazy. But at the same time, um, you know, we took the safety precautions that we needed to and we were still able to, you know, meander about the island and kind of, you know, go one and two places, go to the beach, go to a few restaurants and eat and all that kind of good jazz. So, you know. Uh, D 
Dion Howard. Greetings, greetings, greetings. Don, you're trying to maintain. I know it's it's kind of crazy. Like I've realized, you know, I don't know. Like I feel like the masks are helpful, but I feel like it's going to cause additional respiratory issues for people because it's like you're breathing in moisture on a consistent and regular basis, depending on how long you have to wear the masks. And I, and I get it. It's a necessary precaution, but it's kind of like... I don't know. I feel like something else is going to come down the pipeline. And it's like, you know, everyone is preparing for this second wave of the pandemic. And, you know, y'all U.S. citizens, some of your states are just absolutely out of control. But, you know, it is what it is. Nick 186 is going on. Humble King. <laughs> What's going on? So, oops. I'm trying to wave back. It's just not working out for me. Why is this not behaving? Okay, so WBMD or WDM, whatever your name is, you keep requesting to talk to me and that's just not going to happen. So one of two things are going to happen if you request me again. I'm just going to eject you from the live and you're going to get blocked. Like I said, I'm not interested in seeing your penis, sir. Just chill, chill. <laughs> Come join the discussion, sit a spell, relax. It's not that serious. Um, you're in a mask for 10 hours a day, Don? For real, eh? Yeah, no, I'm not, I'm not trying to do that at all like I wear the mask if I have to go into like a grocery store or that kind of thing and I feel like I'm dying like I'm literally <laughs> I'm literally walking around like so I have the mask on and, and the ones that I have have the elastic over the head because I don't like the feeling of it behind my ears and then um what ends up happening is I pull it forward so that I can breathe from underneath or like I kind of cheat a little bit and I like have it sitting here but it's crazy. I feel like the people who have to wear them for 10 and 12 and 14 hours, I salute you guys because that shit is crazy. Okay, so WDM1348, I'm going to block you from the conversation because you're on something that I'm just not on. So thanks for hanging out. Okay, <laughs> let's move on. So Nook186, uh, my job is making me wear a mask the whole shift, right? It's killing me and I work 12 hours now, fam. That's... So I feel like this, okay? And this is from past experience. So uh, adult hum adult humans, adults, are supposed to have between, like a healthy adult, healthy oxygen levels are between 94% and 99% oxygen in your blood. And I feel like, because it's not normal or natural for us to have face coverings on for that length of time, I feel like the, our level of oxygen is being decreased, um, which is, it's, it's gonna... <sighs> I don't know if this is a conversation we have right now, but it's it's going to have long term long term effects on people because you, you can't be walking around with a diminished capacity it affects everything. It affects, you know, it makes you lethargic. It makes you a little bit confused, like it, ch it changes and diminishes your mental capacity. Like there's a whole lot of shit that goes wrong. Um, anyhow, um, there's somebody that logged in whose name is Wuma Shifter. Very interesting. <laughs> Uh, Humble King, we have to wear them, but I don't wear them all day. That's at least good. Like, I, I'm hoping for the people who have to wear them, you know, um, 10 and 12 hours, that there's some sort of relief in between, because having to have them on for that length of time, it's it's a lot, you know. Um, I would also say for people who have to wear their masks that frequently and that, like, for such long periods of time, go get checked and make sure that the, the levels of oxygen in your blood are, um, are not decreasing, because that could have long-term effects on you and I'm speaking from a place of experience um, with having diminished um, oxygen capacity in my blood um, it definitely affects your your overall health and your overall performance so if you have an opportunity sorry for the loud noise in the background but if you have an opportunity to go and get checked um, I would definitely suggest that you do that mr. Klingman what's going on <laughs> greetings and welcome um, it's going, it is going to hurt in the long run. It really and truly is. And then I look at, you know, like when the winter rolls around again and, and with the cold weather, like it's just going to be absolutely crazy. Uh, when you actually have coronavirus and have to wear it, it's really hard since the symptom of shortness of breath. And, and that's, that's my whole thing. It's like, you already have diminished lung capacity. You already have a diminished amount of oxygen in your blood. And now, you know what I mean? Like having to wear this mask continuously impacts all of those things. So if nothing else, and I know for some of you, depending on where you live, it's not as easy to go to the hospital to get um, like the, a health check and it costs money. But if you can and you have the ability to and it's not going to impact you financially, go and get a physical check to make sure that the levels of oxygen in your blood are between 94% 
and at least 99%. That is that is like a normal level for um, adults. If it's less than that, you need to talk to someone um, because that should be a concern for you. Anyhow, um, girl, one hour, listen to me. I have a mask on for 10 minutes and I feel like I'm dying, you know? And granted, like when I go into spaces where, you know, it's mandatory to wear them, I will put it on, but you best believe once I am, once my toe crosses the door line to come outside, the mask is coming off. And you like, yeah, I'm, I'm just done. And then it's crazy because I see people walking around outside by themselves, no less, with the mask on, or they're in their car driving. Gretchen, do you know that you're in your car by yourself? Coronavirus isn't waiting around like, oh, there he is. Get him, get him. He doesn't have a mask on. Like, it, it doesn't work that way. It's not just sort of lingering in the air by itself, waiting for you to pass by and, and, and attached like, <laughs> anyhow. So uh, tonight, 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 uh, we are talking about um, relationships. And if you lose something of yourself when you take your spouse's last name and do you believe in gender roles or traditional gender roles within a relationship? Now, of course, you know, I take it with a knock that there are a lot of non-traditional relationships. There are, you know, relationships that fall within the scope of the LGBTQ plus community, um, non-binary relationships, people who are asexual and, and all those sort of things. So taking into consideration relationships on a whole. Um, is there such a thing as gender role? Do you believe in gender roles? And do you feel like you lose something when you take your spouse's last name? So, um, an article, not an article, there was a tweet that I saw where a gentleman basically said, if he's getting married to a woman, or if he is with a woman and he proposes to her and they're on the threshold of getting married, and the argument or the discussion is she does not want to take his last name, he's not going to get married to her. Um, and, you know, there are... I don't know if we are basing now standards on used to be standards because again you know if we're talking about traditional heterosexual relationships you know in in the 40s and 50s when our parents and our grandparents got married the woman took the husband's last name and that's just what it was um, a lot less people are opting to get married now because of, you know, a lot of people got married back then because of financial reasons. People are opting not to get married as often for a number of different reasons because they have more financial independence and, and all this kind of stuff. Plus it's, you know, I think a lot of people feel, a lot of women feel in traditional heterosexual relationships, women feel that they're losing a part of themselves or they're losing a part of their identity and taking their husband's last name. Um... So Kirby Empress says, so unnecessary. I'm not sure if that's related to this conversation. Humble King, gender roles are made by society and social media. Don, I'm fine with my spouse having a conjoint last name. Okay, so Don, let me ask you first and foremost. What if your spouse doesn't want to have a conjoint? Like they don't want to hyphenate their name in any way, shape, or form. They want to keep their name. Okay? So like for me, for example, my last name is branded to my business. So not this, the podcast or anything, like my actual physical business that I own my other business um my last name is branded to my um my business now if i were to get married as it is now i don't know that i would change my last name or if i would keep my last name as it is for branding for business and then change my last name physically on paper but then still continue to use my last name um you know that's a discussion before marriage. It is, you know, and, and sometimes it, it's one of those things where I feel like, okay, so in this particular instance where the gentleman made that comment, I think his assumption was that if, if he is getting married to a woman and he is playing the role of the husband and he is playing the head of the household and the lead in the family, then the natural progression should be that she takes his last name. And I know a lot of people attribute it to like, you know, in the biblical sense where, you know, when a man goes to find a woman and he takes a woman, you know, the woman is to take his last name. And not just there's necessarily in the biblical sense, but in, in religious text on a whole, where the, 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 in heterosexual relationships, again, that we're just specifically focusing on that right now, where the woman takes the, the husband's last name. 
Um, of course, we don't live in those times. And of course, you know, there's a lot that has changed in the last hundred years. Um, and even in the last 50 years and even in the last 30 years where women are more so taking a stance to either hyphenate their last names or they're keeping part of their identity, keeping part of their familial identity, or they're just not taking their husband's last name at all. Of course, that's definitely a conversation that has to happen before. But then my question is, why is it such a big deal that one person has to take another person's last name? S. Marie, <laughs> what's going up? Um, so Dawn, uh, uh, my issue is, if I choose to have children with that person, whose last name will they have? So, okay. So if you have children with that individual, why can they not, why can your children not have a hyphenated last name? Is the question. So, okay, so let's talk about hyphenated last names for a minute. So my children, um, my adult children, both of their last, their last names are hyphenated. So I kept my last name, their dad kept their last name, and when we had them, we gave them a conjoined last name. The interesting thing about that is most people have the woman's last name first and then the, their last name. So my last name, as everyone knows, is Jones. So the initial is J and his last name initial is S. And so the conversation I had with him, because everybody always says that, you know, the woman's name is supposed to go before the hyphen and then it's the, it's the man's name. And I've always said to people that doesn't make sense because as the man who, again, from a biblical standpoint or a religious standpoint, if the man is the head of the family and the children are, you know, they come under his last name, then the hyphenation should be under his last name. So when they're registered in school and business and so on, it's registered under S, like Sam, instead of J, like Jones. But people are like, no, that's wrong. It's supposed to be the woman's last name first and then the man's last name. But I'm, but I'm saying like, when, when you think about it logically, which a lot of people don't do, it doesn't make any sense. But anyways, um, Humboldt King, in situations like that, I would understand her wanting to keep her last name. Same situation if she is the last member of her family, right, with the last name, then she can keep and hyphenate it. Yes, I agree in those circumstances. And, and that's the thing is like, a, you know, I feel like when people have these conversations, they're not necessarily having the conversations from... Um, a mentally stable place they're thinking of their thought process is well that's just how it's supposed to be you know a woman is supposed to take a man's last name and or if she hyphenates her last name it has to be her you know what I mean it's like it's like people are not thinking outside of the box and people actually aren't giving really weight and thought to the conversation they're kind of just going with whatever traditionally happened in the generations before and I find that a lot of people don't question things. They don't ask, and not necessarily to question things in a, in a rebellious sort of way, but just to even ask a question about why it is that way. Um, and even when we, you know, broaden the scope and we look at, you know, um, married couples within the LGBTQ community, you know, again, in, in the same sort of thing, is, is there a dominant role and a less dominant role? Are there gender roles within the LGBT community? And when I say gender roles, I don't necessarily mean as you identify with being male, female, or otherwise. Um, but just in terms of, okay, well, these are specific things that, you know, the, the head of the household does versus, you know, um, who is not the head of, not necessarily not the head of the household. So uh, within the LGBTQ community, so if you have children, you know, are there specific roles where one parent does like the sports and all that kind of stuff, whereas one person, the other parent stays at home, the other parent is a stay at home parent, right? Within the same, within same sex um, relationships. So I know like, um, Within, hetero within the heterosexual community, when you have children, there are specific, I don't want to say specific roles, but when you look at maternity leave, maternity leave is favored over paternity leave. And there are more stay-at-home mothers once they've had the children than stay-at-home fathers. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's like society has programmed us to believe, expect, and understand that there are specific roles and that and people never really question them. It's just sort of a natural thing. For the people who do question them and say, okay, you know what, let's do a half and half where I'll take, you know, part of the time at, for maternity leave and then the father will have part of, part of the time for paternity leave. That's a conversation that happens within the families. Um, Dawn, I was in a situation where the woman just didn't like my last name and wanted to go under her mother's maiden name of King. Well, that's interesting. So, you know, of course, Don, we're going to have a conversation about you uh, getting married because I didn't know that, you know, that was a thing. <laughs> I just learned something new. So, um, what are everyone's thoughts on that? Is, you know, is it an issue if a, if a person want, does not want to take their spouse's last name, whether it's hyphenated or not?
Yes, the Wawa cup. Fada LP, what is going on? I'm seeing a lot of people that I haven't seen in a very, very long time. I hope everyone is doing well. Um, I personally... <laughs> okay, so it's a weird thing for me. I base everything on the fact that I'm an old woman or a much older lady, which, you know, I love to say. That's like my favorite thing to say. Um, I don't feel at this point in my life that I would take anybody's last name. I feel like we could come together as a couple, do the whole marriage thing, and then, you know, they return, retain their individuality and I retain my individuality. Um, I feel like we live in a world now where that kind of thing is okay. Whereas before, I think it was more so seen, more so seen as ownership. Like you, you had to be Mrs. Somebody or you had to be, um, it, I don't want to say belong to, but you almost had to belong to somebody for the sake of respect in, in society. But things have changed a lot, you know, in, in as we've come up over the years, um, you know, but one of the things that, that disappoints me the most is, is, is the backlash that happens when people have these conversations, you know, and, and the aggressive manner in which people have these conversations. Because, you, you know, you can have dialogue about what is right for your relationship without having to take a societal standpoint on it, you know, or say, well, that's what my parents did and that's what my grand... It's great that that's what your parents did and it's great that that's what your grandparents do, but you're not them. You know, and we live in a completely different world. And when we look at levels of respect, you know, you have people who have taken other people's last names and hate the person, don't like the person's last name. They've got a shitty relationship. So it's like, are you are you forcing that on somebody for the sake of what tradition is and for, for the sake of appearances versus, you know, is this something that you really want to do because you're you're showing it's, it's a show of solidarity, let's say. Um, I stopped Marie back in the day. I was very traditional in thinking, but I feel now that you should do what makes you and your household happy. Absolutely. Um, I love his last name, but I am. You are the last of your, you're the youngest, the oldest of your father's kids. So you want to keep his name. Okay. Um, Humble King. It's a different time. Absolutely. Mo MK3. Um, Father LP. If you don't take the name, whose name do you keep? You keep your own name. The one you have, so your last name is that of your father's last name. Um, it depends on where you're where you're from, you know. And I think in the Spanish community, they take their mother's last name, if I'm not mistaken. Um, kids do, or if their name is a double name, the mother's the mother's family last name comes before the father's last name. So I think it depends on where it is that you're from. But then, so Father LP, I'm asking you. So like, does it matter whether or not your spouse takes your last name? Like, it, does that significantly impact your relationship or change the scope of your relationship because that person has decided to retain their last name and you've decided to keep yours? Even if the negotiation is that you have children and, and even if the agreement is, okay, so you have children, the children will take the father's last name or if you have children and the, and the children's last name will be hyphenated. So for my ex and I, when we had kids, the conversation that we had prior to having children is that the kids would have both of our combined last names um, because I am the only girl and the last in my family and he's the only boy. So it was, it was important for them to be able to recognize both parts of their family and not just one. Um, for my, my wife, us both, take them both. Yes, I agree with you. Humble King, not, nah, it doesn't matter. M3K, it mattered to me. Okay, so Mo, why did it matter to you whether or not your wife took your last name? Please ex let everybody know. Um, my kids all have my last name. Okay, so Fada LP, so you were okay with your wife keeping her last name. You kept your last name, but your children, your children have the, the, per, the uh, paternal, paternal last name of the family. Okay, so do you think that if, if there was a conversation that took place where your wife had wanted for your children's name to be hyphenated, would that be a conversation that you were open to? <laughs> Mr. Trini BBC, what's going on? It's always strange to me when people want to send me chat requests outside of this in my DM because I'm seeing them pop up at the top. So, um... <laughs> Anyhow, um, okay, so then the other, the other, uh, conversation piece that I saw in regards to traditional roles, um, this is something a little bit different. It's not necessarily related to, um, getting married and all that kind of stuff. Sorry, let me just read Mo's comment. Um, it's how I was raised and what I believed in. Okay, so Mo, 
because it's how you were raised and what you were believed in, did you ever question it or you just said, okay, well, that's just how it is and that's just how it's going to be? And then with your wife, was there ever a conversation where she said, you know what, I don't know, necessarily know that I want to take your last name. I'll keep mine, you keep yours, or we can hyphenate them and the kids can have yada, yada, yada. Um, Fada LP, I wouldn't mind with my daughters. So it, it's, it's, it's interesting because I've, I've had this conversation with a number of different people and there are, there are, there are again, pertaining to heterosexual, um, heterosexual couples in particular, you know, I've, I've heard conversations where like women will be like, I'm not changing my last name. I don't care if I get married. I'm not taking no man's last name. I'm keeping my daddy's last name. And you know what I mean? Like there's this real hostility and aggression about it, you know? And then on the flip side of that, you know, there are men, well, I'm not going to marry a woman that's not going to take my last name. Like if we get married, we come together as one. And again, I feel like a lot of people base, okay, so for the individuals who are saying, you know, they're not going to be with somebody who's not going to take their last name, that is very much rooted in their religion and their faith and what they've seen from their parents and their, and their grandparents and the generations that came before. And then, you know, for women, there's a sense of losing their identity. You're no longer a strong woman if you take a man's last name and all this independence and so on and so forth. And then it, it kind of begs the question like, okay, well, what does, what does marriage mean to people these days? That's a whole other conversation that we'll do on a different day. Um, um, but the other part of it is, you know, in terms of uh, gender roles. So, <laughs> okay, so for me, I pride myself on being a strong black woman. But if I can avoid taking out the garbage, if I can avoid taking out the yard waste, if I can avoid cutting the grass, doing the weed whacking, doing any sort of home care, I will avoid it at all costs. You can have that responsibility, no problem. Um, and I don't necessarily know that that's the way that I was raised because you know my son used to, when my son lived here those are the things that he did and now that he doesn't live here I obviously have to do those things because they're not going to get done if I don't do them you know um but I think it was more so enjoying the comfort and the luxury of not having to do those things versus it being you know a woman's role to do like the in-house stuff and then a man's role to do the outside stuff um squash one I used to I would use both some persons are very hype with it a co-worker of mine got married and I saw her and called her by what I know her name is and she was like miss it yes and they will get in their feelings and want to fight you about it <laughs> Mo um your wife was always going to take your last name okay sir all right <laughs> um yeah it's I don't know so for, for some people I know it's it's a complete badge of honor to take their their spouse's last name and then I know for some people there is this feeling of like truly they feel like they're losing a part of their identity or they feel like they're losing a part of themselves um, and I know a lot of what we have chosen as a society is based largely on religious beliefs largely based on like our family backgrounds you know and the, and the traditions of our families um, but I, again, I always ask the question, why, why do people not question those things? Do we just go ahead and accept them because that's the way that things have always been? Um, and far be it for me to ever say to anybody, you should or you shouldn't, or why would you do that? Or, you know, what have you, it's more so about having these conversations to open people's way of thinking and to just kind of give people a different perspective. Um, and even as far as gender roles, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, when I was a kid, it's like, you know, girls had to be in by a certain time, whereas boys could be outside like till a couple of hours later. And it's funny because when I was an adult, you know, I had this conversation with my mother and she's like, oh, well, that's how it was when she was a kid. You know, girls were always inside, you know, before the boys and the boys got to be outside and play later because they're boys. I'm like, okay, that doesn't make sense. They can get hurt the same way. They can get ticked off the street the same way. <laughs> you know what I mean? They can get molested and, and, and dill the same way as, as girls do. Um, I am King Kenny. Greetings. <laughs> um, sorry, I say I'm a lot because I'm my, my mind, my brain is all over the place. But yeah, I, I feel like there is a bigger conversation that needs to happen between people where it's not a combative discussion about why a person doesn't want to take another person's last name. And it shouldn't necessarily like, like the, the conversation should never involve oh, I'm a strong, independent, yada, 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 you know? Because at the end of the day, okay, so speaking entirely from a woman's perspective, at the end of the day, to fight against somebody who loves you, to fight against somebody who wants to be with you, to fight against somebody who wants to provide for you, to fight against somebody who wants to support you, even though you can do all those things for yourself, I would think that 
it would be a much better feeling and a much better space in your heart to have that occupied that by someone who was trying to do that journey with you as opposed to fist in the air singing the song of of you know singleness and singing the song of solidarity to being a strong black woman you know being dependent on someone and and sharing your life with someone doesn't take away your strength you know choosing to take someone else's last name doesn't take away your strength and it should never be a combative conversation where your first inclination is to say no i'm not doing that without having a valid conversation or without having valid reason or without having any kind of conversation just because it's worth having a conversation about why it is that you feel that way because i find that oftentimes people will say oh they don't want to do something because oh well they just don't want to do it it's an immature response it, it lacks thought it lacks compassion if you are in a loving relationship you owe it to that person and you owe it to yourself to have an involved conversation about why you feel a particular way about a particular thing um mo my wife doesn't touch anything that has to do with outside of the house stuff yeah i understand that <laughs> um and and it was like that you know when when the children's father and i were together like i never i never did any of the outside stuff you know um, and not because I couldn't and not because he wouldn't allow me to and not because of any reason other than it just was it was those kind of roles that we just accepted. So like if the toilet needed plunging, I never did it. <laughs> you know, it wasn't it, it was like this natural automatic thing to say, hey, I'm not going to say his name, but hey, W, um, you know, the toilet's plugged and he'd be like, OK, I'll go take care of it. Now, mind you, it would have been just as easy for me to go pick up the plunger, plunge the toilet fix up the things get some towels clean up the water and all that kind of stuff but it was one of those things that never occurred to me to do because it always fell under the role of being a man and it was just kind of one of those things that you kind of expected now interestingly enough i have power tools but if it was a situation that required a power tool i never used them because it was one of those things where you, you know what i mean so uh, let's see comments it's a cop-out response it absolutely is um Failing to actually have the discussion speaks simply to the unwillingness to communicate for whatever the reason. I absolutely agree. Um, everyone has their role, Mo says. So, Mo, when you say, Mo, I'm picking on you tonight. <laughs> when you say that everyone has their role, what exactly does that mean? Do you, do you believe that there are traditional male-female roles? And does that extend to non-heterosexual couples? right because when we say that there are traditional roles and again this is this is what i was kind of alluding to we, we are talking about you know what we know relationships to be where it's a man and a woman but the reality is there are there are there's no such thing as a traditional relationship anymore i can hear my daughter knocking upstairs um i don't know i feel like There has to be a point where within your relationship, you have a conversation about what works for you in your relationship. Not based on family, not based on family history. You know, you're always gonna get the talk and, and, and the, the, the adage from people outside, like you're, you know, you're always gonna get the talk from your parents and from your grandparents about, oh, well, in our day, oh, in my generation, and so on and so forth, right? It's always going to be that way. But we are living in an age that is so advanced and so much more communicative now where you should be having conversations about what works for you in your relationship as it pertains to your relationship in the, in the here and now, right? Um, and, and, and I don't say that to be disrespectful to, you know, what our parents what our parents did in terms of the vows that they took and what our grandparents did in terms of the vows that they took and the manners in which they decided to, to live their lives. It's not to discredit or disrespect that, but we're not our parents and we're not our grandparents and we, we are afforded a lot more in the world that we live in now, as crappy as it is sometimes. Um, we have access to more and we are afforded a lot more than our parents were, you know, especially for women. The roles were very different because there wasn't a lot for a woman to do back then other than to be somebody's wife, you know. Um, there were less choices because, you know, if she wanted to get out of the house, if she wanted to make something of herself, if she wanted to see the world, if she wanted to have any sort of independence from her family, you got married and that's what you did. Um, now you have more choices about whether or not you want to get married. I know a lot more people are sort of, you know, siding with being single 
I don't necessarily know that they're siding with being single for the, you know, for the, the, the fear factor in terms of losing their independence and what the what ifs of like the what if it doesn't work out and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I, but I do believe in the solidarity of those relationships. I don't know that giving up your last name is either here or there. I don't know that giving up your last name should be a make or break. Um, Mr. Trini BBC, that is a hell of a question. I've never thought of it from the same sex relationship perspective. Um, crown me cozy. What's going on? Crown him cozy. <laughs> it's a household by household situation. Absolutely. Um, Mo, I do believe we do have a traditional rule. And if you're with someone that has that same belief as you, then it's just the norm. But one must be open to change. Absolutely. Um, and, and that's the whole thing. It's like, I would never criticize anyone who um, says that, okay, well, they believe that this is a man's role, a man's responsibility, this is a woman's role, and this is a woman's, woman's responsibility. I'm, I'm all about education, I'm all about communication, I'm all about learning, um, and, and teaching as well, and sharing information and sharing knowledge and, and coming to a place of understanding. You know, Because I believe in one particular way of living doesn't make that the norm. And my biggest issue with, you know, um, traditional relationship rules or traditional relationships is the fact that there is no such thing as a traditional relationship or traditional relationship roles. The reality is, okay, so even if we take it purely from a biblical standpoint, even if we take it purely from a religious standpoint, you have people who take their vows, you know, in front of church, God, and everybody else, whether that church, whether it's the mosque, whether it's the synagogue, whether it's you know your Hindu temple or whatever they're, they're taking this they're taking their vows in front of their God and in front of you know for their faith um, but you don't know what people are doing behind closed doors you know behind closed doors the roles could be completely switched you know um, there are several men that I know that they took paternity leave because their wives wanted to go to work you know and the men had no problem with that so from an outward perspective, what ends up happening is now the men get chastised because, oh, well, that's a woman's role or, oh, women are supposed to stay home with the baby. That's more natural for a woman. There's no such, no, there isn't. First of all, you have breast pumps and you can pump, pump milk all the live long day, right? Suppose it's a financial situation where the woman is the one in the relationship that makes more than the man. So she should not go to work because of some societal standard that says that women are supposed to take maternity leave or these are the traditional roles of women, that's absolutely, it's idiotic. It's absolutely idiotic. <laughs> Do you like little dick white boys? Oh boy. Uh, you know, <laughs> I'm going to leave that comment for anybody who's in the chat to respond because I'm just not doing it to myself. Um, Anyhow, Mo, I do, I absolutely agree with you. I think that it, it's it's a relationship by relationship um, situation where people need to have those conversations and not necessarily um, do what the world expects them to do. Um, I think that's where we fall short a lot of times is that, you know, we're, we're living our happiness for our parents. We're living our happiness for our grandparents. We're living our happiness for, you know, our, our religious facility. We're living our happiness for our aunts, our uncles, the people around us instead of living our happiness for us, and instead of living in our relationships for us, right? At the end of the day, at night, it's you and that person breathing in one another's faces, plain and simple. <sighs> Black Glade 45, I don't know who, <laughs> you've got a magnet, I swear. <laughs> I got a magnet for the crazies, right? <laughs> uh, I've come to expect it. Yeah. So let's digress for a minute. Um, I don't, I, I don't know what's wrong with people. You know, I, um, I take it with a grain of salt and I know Dawn always tells me that to just, you know, it, it, it's gonna happen. And no matter how many people I block, no matter how many people I eject from the conversations, there's always somebody new that comes along that wants to do some foolishness. They either wanna show me their penis, they wanna ask me to see my boobs, they want me to, they, just, crazy so black glade 45 i don't know you from a hole in the wall please explain to me why you think i would take my time to take out my breast them for sure you and everybody else your mother something wrong with you <laughs> oh my goodness me um mo i would be a stay-at-home dad you know honestly um i think like even when um i had my children i think at the time um, 
when we had our when we had our our daughter uh i was making more more money um than he was and i stayed home because you know of the criticisms of family of the criticisms of the elder women in my family that you know you're supposed to stay home it's a woman's job it's a woman's role and when i tell you i used to pump like a human cow <laughs> like i used to pump like yeah I, I was literally a human cow um and and you know i i i succumbed to that i succumbed to the pressure of this is a woman's role this is this is what women are supposed to do um you know hindsight is always 2020 and when you look back at it you know would i've made a different choice absolutely would i've stood up to you know the chat teams absolutely because it financially just didn't make any sense you know it would have been more responsible to our family for for him to have stayed home and for me to have gone to work um, but you know, it is what it is. Um, I do believe again, you know, like most of the conversation we've been having that you have to make individual choices, you know, and I know sometimes it's hard to stand up to family. And I know sometimes it's hard to stand up to, um, you know, the religious facilities that we are part of and the religions that we are part of to kind of, you know, break away and do your own thing. But again, as I said, at the end of the day, you're the one that lives in your household. You're the one that lives with your partner, whether you're in a heterosexual relationship or not, you know, you're the one has to deal with the day, the day to day, um, in ins and outs of your relationship and, and weighing what you do in your relationship based on your parents or society or anything like that will get you in trouble. It really and truly will. You know, you can't live your life for somebody else. You have to live your life within your life for you and the person that you're living your life with. You know, hopefully that made sense. Uh, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Trini, um, I think up to the last two generations, there was just um, continuation passed down roles and responsibilities. I, I completely agree with you. Um, you know, and, and I, know that, I know that sometimes it's difficult to, to stand up and say, no, we're not going to do that. Um, no, I'm not going to take the, you know, your last name because I just don't want to. Or, no, I'm not going to take your last name because I want to retain that part of my familial um, identity. You know, I can hyphenate my last name. Um, but even things like that, it's like, why is it such a big deal to meld and merge your last name with another person um, in some really weird, archaic way? And again, not to be offensive to anybody, it's a show of ownership, you know? And some people are okay with that and some people are not okay with that. And, but again, it has to be a conversation that, that happens within your relationship i remember um a man that i was dating years ago i was like so if we get married you're gonna take my last name he's like fuck no <laughs> and i was like why not he's like because you know i'm a man and men don't do that the woman is supposed to take the man's last name i'm like are you listening to yourself right now he's like yeah because that's the way that it's supposed to be i'm like but why he's like i don't know that's just the way it's supposed to be and that was pretty much the end of that conversation and i realized that you know we were never going to have a bigger discussion about why and so it's like you know i said okay well i would just keep my my last name and then that became an even bigger argument they're like well what's the point of getting married then i'm like because the point of getting married is it's a union it doesn't have anything to do with your last name really and truly because i'm still going to be me and you're still going to be you like i could still walk the street and say to people my last name is jones even if I'm married and my last name is 23 letters long based on, you know, me taking your last name, it, it shouldn't really be here or there. People forget the important things of being in a relationship and that's the relationship. You know, having a person's last name really and truly in the greater scheme of things is neither here or there. You can have the most fantastic and wonderful relationship keeping your last name and you could have the shittiest relationship taking that person's last name. The last name is neither here or there. It's not a, the show of solidarity is the manner in which you conduct yourself in your relationship. That's the show of solidarity. You have a lot of people who have somebody else's last name and can't stand that person. Um, Mo, would you keep your last, at this, Mo, I just said I'm old. I, at this point in my life, I would just keep my last name. I wouldn't even bother. Like it just, to me, there are more important things in the relationship to be worked on whether than whether or not I have his last name or her last name. Yeah, I said him or her. <laughs> um, Mr. Trini BBC. Um, my only view on the last name is that it does 
is does it matter you take the name you hyphenate her it, it doesn't matter more than actually being married to the person and that's exactly the point that i was trying to make um i know one man that took his wife's name he married into the business and took that name um and became head of the business good for him um you know and a lot of people can't see that sort of thing you know they think that okay Again, based on history, based on the traditional roles, and I think even as far as, you know, um, couple relationships within the LGBTQ community, you know, there's something about, and, and I hate the word, but the only thing that comes to mind is like, it's like ownership. Because really and truly, taking one name or the other is not partnership, it's ownership. Because if it was partnership, then you would agree to hyphenate your last name. That man that married into the business and took the family last name, he was smart because he was looking at what his future was going to be, right? If I am going to be head of the family, head of the business, head of the company, and take over this legacy, shit, let me take that company's last name? How you mean? Because at the end of the day, that whole conglomerate, that whole company is not changing their last name for him. He's not, they're not mirroring into his, he's mirroring into their family. And as much as, you know, when we look at it from a religious standpoint, they're saying like, you know, when a man takes a woman, this, that, and the third, the woman is married. No, in, in, in this particular instance, he's mirroring into that entire family. And that was the smartest thing he could have ever done. People get caught up on the small details that don't matter. People get caught up on the small details that really don't matter. Ownership is not partnership. And at the end of the day, whether the person takes your last name or not, if you are in love with them and you want to spend the rest of your life with them, what does them having your last name matter? Um... <laughs> So you take the last name Jones? Come on. I'm looking for a husband to take my last name. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like Jones goes great with everything. Anyhow, um, I'm not staying. Um, I am going to end the conversation a little bit early, which I'm pretty sure it's going to wrap up soon anyways. Let's see how much time we've got left. Got like maybe another 10 minutes, but I'm going to head out. Um, I want to thank everyone who joined the discussion and gave their feedback. I appreciate you guys as always. Um, I thought I ejected this man. Okay, so you see this craziness? WDM1348 was WDM98, and I blocked him. Came back as somebody else. So, you know what? Let me go ahead. I need to come back from another page to come talk to me. Love you, Mo. <laughs> Sometimes a small... Okay, so wait, wait. Big Daddy FR. Okay, so... For me, a small detail is whether or not you take the person's last name. Is that a detail that matters for you? Does the change does that change the scope of your love for a person that you want to get married to if they decide that they don't want to take your last name? Questions, questions. A beverage. See, I was gonna go. Got right back into the conversation. Um for those of you who are asking about my tattoo, I can't really, I don't want to stand up because that's just going to cause a whole bunch of problems, but um, they're starting to peel. They look really gross, <laughs> but I know once they peel, they're going to look lovely. And of course I can give you guys an update. I would show you now. I showed it earlier, but they're so gross. Oh my goodness me. Um, listen to me. Hi. Hi. Leave my Wawa cup alone, please. I'm going to keep this cup until I go back to the States to get a new one. Every day I get wash and I scrub it down and I fill it back up again. Yeah, that's, don't judge me. <laughs> it's the greatest cup. Um, Big Daddy FR, no, it doesn't. And, and yeah, I understand that, you know, there are some small details that absolutely do matter. But again, it, they're, they're conversation worthy, not argument worthy. Um, I just feel like if I'm in love with you, you're in love with me, and we are planning on getting married, and I come to you and I say, um, I'm not so good on the idea of changing my last name, I want to keep mine, and your only response is, well, we're going to call off the wedding, <laughs> that's a problem, and, and that's a bigger discussion that has to take place, because that, to me, screams of ownership, not partnership, and the point of being in a marriage and the point of being in a relationship is for partnership, not ownership. Um, that's it. Anyhow, I'm out of here. <laughs> I hope that you guys have a great night. Stay safe. Stay blessed.
for those of you who are on those shifts where you're wearing your mask for 10 and 15 fucking hours, my heart goes out to you because why? I can't get through 30 minutes without feeling like I'm way dead. <laughs> so, um, you know, uh, stay safe. Um, definitely take care of yourself. And uh, I will see you guys. But it does to me if a woman doesn't want to take your last name. Oh, man, here we go again. Okay, so why does it matter to you if a woman doesn't want to take your last name? Like, if you're already, you've already proposed, you're already engaged, the wedding is three months down the road, and she comes to you and she says, I don't want to take your last name. I want to keep my last name. I want to retain that part of my family. How is that a problem for you? Does that change the scope of your love? Does that change the fact that you want to get married to her? How does that change and affect the direction that you were headed in, you know, prior to her telling you that? How, how does that affect you? How does that change? Anyhow, you might have to DM me and give me the answer, and I'll share that with everybody after. And I'm actually going to put this question up um, on my main page for people to give their feedback and give their input. So you might want to spread it there as well. But I'm gone. <laughs> I'm going to go drink something and eat something. And... Um, so endless, endless pleasure, Philly. Name doesn't matter to me. My wife has her father's last. Because at the end of the day, the person is still your person. The, the person is still your person. You're still in a partnership with this individual. You're still married to this individual. You should still love this individual. The last name shouldn't make a difference. If I'm married to you and I wake up one day and I decide that I want to change my first and last name to Twinkle Stardust, how are you going to get mad at me? How, how are you? It doesn't change the fact that I love you. It doesn't change the fact that we're in a partnership. It doesn't change the fact that I'm your wife. It doesn't change the fact that I love you. It doesn't change the fact that I love you. It doesn't change the fact that I love you. The only thing it changes is my name. It only thing it changes is the way that I identify myself. Um, name da, 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 da. If, we has, if we have kids, that's my legacy. No. If you have kids, that's your legacy together. Those children are not just yours. They are both of yours. And, and, and that's a whole other discussion, but that, that's part of the problem. And again, that's ownership. That's ownership, not partnership. You didn't make those babies by yourself. You didn't make those babies by yourself. That legacy is not just yours. That is her legacy as well. So if she wants to keep her last name, why would you not hyphenate your children's last name? So the legacy that rolls forward is a legacy of both yours. Something for you to ponder and think on. Anyhow, I'm gone. I <laughs> love you guys. I'll see you next week for another uh, round of Wet Wednesdays in the meantime and in between time. Quasi. Ready, stay safe.